an MMA fan with the whole media and production that surrounds this game, we're so used to seeing these fighters as personalities. It's easy to forget that some of them at their core are the type of people to throw down in the street and don't think about it twice in any situation. I personally can't stomach ever watching street fighting videos or anything of the like. It's just not my style or something I've ever enjoyed. But throughout life, I can't help but have always appreciated the people that would step up and throw down when shit hits the fan. It takes a special type of individual to do so. So I'm conflicted with this Nate Diaz situation and the warrant for his arrest being issued because I truly don't condone violence in the street. It's never a good thing. Yet at the same time, as much as I despise any unsanctioned violence, it's that very quality of Diaz being a real deal fighter that's a big reason why I've admired him so much for all of these years. I truly hated to see what I saw when that video came out of Nate schooling that Jake Paul double or whoever he is, but I certainly don't fault him for the situation. And I realize I'm stating the obvious here, but what kind of moron is that Rodney Peterson dude? Ariel Hawani tweeted out that the guy from the video was a TikToker slash pro boxer with a record of 1-0 and a BJJ blue belt. See, this has always been a thing with the martial arts. You have people that get into it because they want to learn, they develop a passion, and then you have some people coming into it being motivated by the identity of being somebody who trains. It's more about their self-image than the martial art itself. This whole identity thing has always existed in martial arts, but now with MMA being the new hot, popular mainstream thing with all these YouTube stars and influencers buying their way into attaching themselves to legitimate fighters, it's more prevalent than it's ever been. So it's not that surprising to see this doofus, who as it turns out is a Jake Paul impersonator, run up on Diaz in an attempt to attach himself to the moment, to be the guy to step in there and to calm things down with Nate Diaz during a brawl. I mean, the guy is 1-0 as a boxer and he has a blue belt. <laughs> I'm a blue belt. I've also got over 16 years of Muay Thai, but I know my place. I don't think I'm some sort of badass. I'd never go near that situation. You always avoid that. And if Nate Diaz is standing in the center of a melee, you stand back an extra 100 yards than you otherwise would. What exactly was that guy trying to accomplish outside of trying to involve himself in the moment for ego purposes? I honestly don't wish what happened to him on anybody, but hopefully that moron learned a lesson. Anyone who's ever been involved or even with a bird's eye view of a brawl knows it's not cool or a funny situation. It's scary. Whatever tough guy bravado most of these people feel like they'll have in that situation, when shit hits the fan, they'll be running. Did I not recently see a video of Jake Paul literally running away from some sort of real life situation outside in a parking lot recently? They can buy their way into attaching themselves to real fighters, but they cannot buy their way into becoming one. With all these YouTube reality star boxing events and the more these types of people get near the real deal fighters acting like they're the real deal themselves, the more these bad scenarios we're going to see. And it's going to be a bad situation for everybody involved. And this thing of YouTube and reality stars taking to social media to rip on the likes of Diaz are people who have no business holding his jockstrap. Never mind being within 100 yards of him during a street altercation. But even if they end up getting effortlessly choked unconscious and dropped to the ground as their head bounces off the sidewalk, they're still going to use the situation for social media clout when they're in the safety of being far away from the actual situation and no danger of actually having to step up. So I don't know what the hell I did to Nate Diaz, but I'm telling you what, I'm gonna knock him the f out when I know no. he's coming. Okay? Like, you caught me off guard, dude. What, you think I was Logan? I realize I shouldn't get so bent out of shape with these people's actions and they're trying to attach themselves to our sport and its athletes. Why should I care? If I don't like it that much, I should just simply not consume it. But am I the only one that's overly exhausted with this cycle? Now it's turned into these Joe balls getting their ass kicked in the streets. What's next? Whatever it is, I'm ready for it now. Anything to put an end to this craziness. I'm not sure what this means for Diaz. At the time of shooting this video, his lawyer released a statement, and I'm sure it'll ultimately be swept under the rug until something else happens. But I feel like at the rate at which we're going, it's only going to get uglier. The more Diaz is not actively competing and hanging around these jobber events, the more conducive he is to getting into trouble. With all these YouTube and reality star people talking smack online and putting themselves in the line to eventually cross the path with them, I feel like the worst is yet to come. I know that there's a lesson here for all of the YouTube reality star wannabes that want to involve themselves with real fighters, but it won't be anything any of them are going to take heed of. As long as it gets them the attention they're after, this sort of thing will continue once they're in the safety of their own homes and far away from the actual accountability. I'm totally cool with the fact that Diaz is taking these YouTube fights and getting paid way more than the UFC or anybody else would ever pay him. He deserves every penny. But with the latest goings on and no sign of this YouTube reality star boxing thing going away anytime soon, I'm afraid we may have created a monster.